Good afternoon, YouTube and the internet. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, nothing really exciting happening just at the moment, uh, but I am about to just double check these other two cranks like I said I would to see if they are slightly better than the, the one I think I want to use. Uh, I'm just going to measure them up real quick and I'll let you know the results. I don't think I need to show you how to use the mics. I've done that in my last video on the RB so if you're wondering how to use a mic to measure the crank watch that uh, I'm just going to measure up the other two see where I'm at and then see what else I can measure uh, so I can make some machining decisions so I've just quickly measured this crank which is probably out of shot it's the one that came out of the engine that had the knock. So let's quickly. I've measured um, just the, <coughs> excuse me, the horizontal axis. Very consistent measurements, and I'm pretty sure they're all too low. So if they're all too low in one axis on one of the journals, on the rod journal, there's no point in me going any further with it to investigate using it. And I'll go straight on to the other one. Let's have a quick look. What the internet tells me that is in millimeters. Score chest 15. That's the last thing I looked at. Okay. 8831 eight, inches. Millimeters, please Google. Forty-seven point eight three one. Crankshaft pin outer diameter standard value. Is that the one I want? Forty-seven. <laughs> yep. So that diameter on the rods needs to be 47.961 to 47.974 millimeters the most common is 47.831 which is straight up too small so this crank look it could be used in conjunction with bigger bearings it's not it's not uh, beyond salvaging um, but like I said in the past I'd rather take the biggest crank I've got and wide it down to what I want rather than take a crank that's already undersized that I can't choose the size of because there's nothing to take off uh, so I'll grab this crank now stick it up on the bench and have a measure so that confirms the spot measurements I took a couple that's pretty much what it was. The smallest one is uh, 1.8829 inches. Uh, I'll let you do the maths on that, but that's even smaller. That's the smallest one. The biggest measurement is 833, which I think is still going to be under. So even the biggest one's already under, which backs up my theory that this crank had already been ground polished. It's probably for the previous build, and they just put standard bearings in it. Had they not have done that, had they put the correctly sized bearings in it, I'd still be running that engine. Uh, there's nothing else that's gone wrong with it, I'm pretty sure. So I think I just got the the rod knock when it was very faint and very early, um, as demonstrated by the damage on the on the uh, rod bearings. They're not spun, but they are all damaged. There's scoring in them, and there's uh, you know, some pieces missing out of the faces on the cover as well. So I'll grab this other crank, measure it. Let's see if we can get past one set of measurements before bidding this one. One point 
eight, one, two, three, eight, three. So I've repeated the same test. I've just measured one axis on all seven um, main journals. And now I'll quickly convert these. These are thicker than the one I just checked. But I don't think, I still don't think they're in spec. Uh, so 1.8835 mostly. 47.8409 versus a desired outcome. Forty-seven point nine six one. So it is, as per my previous spot checks and the vernier caliper readings, under across the board. Less under than the other one. This one here is right, except for one main bearing being under. So I'm at the point now where I'm going to have to ask for some expert advice as to what the best move is there um, it still looks, looks like that original crank I measured is going to be the best because both of these are under on the mains before you even start so yeah I need to I need to talk to some people who know some shit who know a lot more than me I've got an idea I've got lots of ideas they're not always good ones um, but yeah that's confirmed that. It's not a particularly interesting video, but um, I figured I should uh, get down here and get that done so I can make some final decisions on the build. Uh, big bearing sizes specifically so I can order them. Um, and then I can give sizes to the machinist as well so they can uh, do their bit as accurately as possible. Now the next component I need to measure is well I know well I need to measure the mains but they are like the like the right end <coughs> on here the, they don't move so that the friction material takes up all the wear on those so they should all be the same and they should all be right so it should be just be a case of a quick check uh, measure the bores so I've got my tool for that I've got the battery for it I wanted to do it the other day and then realized it didn't come with a battery it's a digital gauge I can grab it voila so I have to figure out how to set that one up once again I've used these tools in the past. I may have broken the case. No. All good. Um, but it's been a long time since I've used a bore gauge. I remember it being fairly simple. And it should be even simpler with a digital one. Because this has got a, a low hold on it. So it will hold the, the smallest diameter it reads when you're sweeping. Which means you'll get the correct measurement. But I still will have to remind myself how to do it. 